Howdy folks and welcome to episode 2 of Color Theory with Celine where we are teaching our cat Celine about the 10 different color combinations available in Elder Scrolls Legends to build decks with. Uh, last week we focused on yellow blue or mage. This week we are focusing on red yellow or crusader. Uh, crusader is uh, the combination of strength and willpower. We're going to talk about uh, attributes these colors have in common, successful decks they've had in the past, weaknesses that you might face when playing this uh, color combination, um, successful decks that have been running these colors in the past, unexplored decks that haven't really seen a lot of ladder play that are available in these colors, uh, shared mechanics, I said, um, the different level rewards that you can get when you hit uh, le when your legendary rewards that you get at level 24 and 32, and... Um, Finally, we're going to end it like we do every we end every one of these episodes with a new card idea of fresh out of my own mind that uh, combines some of the mechanics uh, for a new dual color card in a way that we haven't seen before. So, let's get started. But first, let's clear this off. I want to wish you a happy new year. Uh, I'm recording this on January 1st. It's going to go up late January 1st. Uh, it's been a busy day for me. Uh, happy uh, Happy New Year from everyone here at. Uh, here at the house, Sander and myself want to thank you all for your support in the last year and uh, say here's to another great year. Hopefully we leave beta sometime soon and uh, we jump headfirst into launch. And everybody who's been watching these videos is, of course, going to have a huge head start when that happens. So, here we go. Elder Scrolls Legends. Um, so I was just saying, these col the colors in this color combination are strength and willpower. Okay. I'm going to move my avatar of myself down here, where it's a little less intrusive and annoying. Um, we'll just go ahead and select tier over here, so we only have access to these colors. Uh, and we'll just go ahead and start off with the cards you can get with a Nord avatar um, when you hit level 24 and 32. Those cards are Relentless Raider, um, Tier, who we just took a look at right there, Hafinger Marauder, a 5-drop, that fellow right there with the hair, and Mirak, who is a real beefy critter, the only uh, yellow, I'm sorry, 11-drop, looks like my game has crashed, that is reassuring, okay, let's uh, not save the deck, let's see if we can't get our card library back up here, sorry about this guys. You may have noticed I had 15,000 soul shards. Uh, the Mud Crab Challenge was issued to me, and I had to craft a bunch of cards I didn't have. So here's Maroc the Dragonborn. We'll go back down to our Crusader deck, so we have access to those colors again. So yeah, the race that these two colors have in common is the Nord race, right? These are the guys who live in Skyrim. Um, you know, Nords are available as a playable race in all of the uh, uh, Elder Scrolls uh, role-playing games and in Elder Scrolls Online, but we really got to delve into their culture in Skyrim um, when we were looking at their conflict with the Imperials. Um, you know, we got to get to know all of their settlements, a lot of their history. And so, yeah, they live in a cold, barren place uh, full of Draugr, um, where life is hard, and as a result, Nords are pretty aggressive, strong, beefy creatures. Um, strength, of course, is known for its aggressiveness, its its strength, right? Um, but uh, willpower is the other aspect of, uh, of the color combination that I think really fits into what a Nord is, too. Um, because living in that harsh tundra, you're going to need to have a lot of willpower to uh, keep going every day. You know, when you live in a place literally called solitude, you know, you got to uh, tough it out a little bit. Um, and yeah, as far as Nords go, there are quite a few. They are the first shared mechanic we're going to be talking about is the uh, Nord mechanic, if you will. Um, and this is the ability that uh, that cares about breaking opponents' runes. Okay. Um, there are several uh, huge examples of this. Um, you know, powerful abilities that that happen when you break rune. The most direct and literal examples of this uh, mechanic that is concerned about pushing damage to the opponent. Uh, you have Morthal Executioner. He's a Nord. He's got a big ol' axe. And every time you break an enemy rune, he gets plus two attack. You have Dawnstar Healer, who I'm covering up, so I'll highlight over here. When an enemy rune is destroyed, gain three life. So you see that it's not just limited to aggressive-type strategies. These uh, abilities go 
you know, run the gamut as far as what these colors can do with the mechanic that the Nords are concerned about, which is breaking enemy runes. Um, and then you have Havinger Marauder, one of the reward cards you can have. Really powerful and potentially can snowball very quickly when a friendly creature destroys an enemy rune, equip it with a random item. Um, and then you have a lot of cards in red that are concerned with breaking runes, like Relentless Raider, who adds an additional damage and is part of one of the only uh, one-turn kill combos available in the game. When you get five of those out on the board and you break an enemy rune, it just chains off and eliminates your opponent without the opportunity to respond or trigger prophecies. Um, you have... Uh, where is it? Riften Pillager from the lovely uh, <laughs> lovely city of Riften in Skyrim, if you recall. Uh, gets plus one, plus one for each enemy rune destroyed. This guy's pretty good in Arena. You know, drop him in the mid game. Three Magicka for a uh, four, five, or five, six. You can combo that with other cards uh, to get, you know, a really effective tempo play. Um, and then you also sort of playing in this mechanic about being really concerned about attacking your opponent. You have the yellow pilfer creatures. Um, the new one, of course, being Elzor Lookout, who was just added to the game today as our reward card for finishing in the, the higher ranks in um, December. Uh, and yeah, it, you know, attacks your opponent, damages your opponent, um, double its look its power and health. This slots nicely into some Crusader type strategies. I think Crusader is probably the best place, in fact, to put that guy. And then you have Rajini Highwayman, Descendant of Alkosh, Doggy Rot Mystic. Um, but beyond just concerning themselves directly with breaking runes, you have an ability that uh, appears in a num on a number of cards in each color. Um, Breakthrough um, appears on Renowned Legate and Hive Warrior in yellow, so a secondary in that color. And then all over a ton of red cards. You have everything from an improvised weapon, looks like a, uh, a torch <laughs> that gives a creature breakthrough, Orc Clan Shaman who gives orcs breakthrough, to a whole host of other creatures that give breakthrough. Um, you also have it on both dual color cards in this color combination, the Rift Thane and Tear. And this is an ability that lets you, you know, if you attack with a six power breakthrough creature and your defender has, uh, and, and the creature that has guard in the opposing lane only has one health, well, five of that damage and everything not necessary to kill the opposing creature is going right through to the opponent. Um, this, you know, helps facilitate the objective of Crusader to break your opponent's runes and get benefits from it. Um, so Breakthrough is a sort of a mini theme in yellow. I imagine there will be more Breakthrough in yellow in the future, and is a huge theme in strength. Um, uh, the, the second theme, and probably the most noticeable one if you've faced Crusader on a ladder, is uh, this, this the idea of going wide, right? Like there are two kind of schools of thought when it comes to how to develop your board in this game. You can go tall um, by having, you know, massive creatures. Scout does this a lot of the time. You know, plays a Naha Glee, plays an Odaving, plays a Blood Magic Lord, invests a lot of root magic, a lot of magicka and uh, time into a single enormous threat going tall. The other ability, the other way you can kind of go with combat in this game or board control in this game is by going wide, um, by laying down a ton of creatures. Right, and there are cards that sort of mirror each other in both colors that do these sorts of things. In in yellow, you have Scouting Patrol, summons uh, one one Imperial Grunt in each lane. In red, you have uh, it's a three drop. Where is it? <laughs> Raiding Party. Right, put two one one Nord Firebrands with Charge into your hand. Um, you have cards that benefit you for going wide. Right, you have. Um, in yellow, you have Pit Lion, who, if you have a creature in both lanes, lets you, for three Magicka, drop a 5-5 creature. That's one of the best rates in the game for a creature. And in, in, in this color combination, not very difficult to pull off. You have cards that benefit you for this strategy, like uh, Broom of Profiteer, the uh, yellow creature who gains you one life every time you summon a creature, gains you one health. Uh, you have... do 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 Imperial Reinforcements, of course, the cla I have some notes here. The classic um, going wide card in yellow fills a lane with 1-1 Imperial Grunts. And then you have one of the most played cards um, in a couple different decks. Uh, the card that we're all afraid of to see land and let live for a turn, Markarth Bannerman. Whenever Markarth Bannerman attacks, you get to put two 1-1 one, one Nord Firebrands with charge into your hand. So this can really get out of control very quickly. Again, going wide by giving you a swarm of creatures, which you can then use to uh, 
overwhelm your opponent, and both of these colors then are excellent, this is another thing they have in common, at increasing the strength of your creatures in small incremental ways, uh, which can really go nicely into a going wide strategy. Um, we have Helgen Squad Leader, a card that I don't see a ton of on the ladder, but fits very excellently into this sort of strategy in Crusader. Two magic for a zero three. Whenever another friendly creature attacks, Helgen Squad Leader gets plus one plus one. You have a couple tokens on the on the board early game. This card gets out of control very quickly, becomes a two drop that must get removed. And you have Fifth Legion Trainer who gives every creature you summon plus one plus zero. In red, there are another uh, several more cards like this. There is Northwind Outpost. Friendly strength creatures have plus one, plus zero. There's Orc Clan Captain. Other friendly creatures in this lane have plus one, plus zero. Uh, they, you know, they go on and on and on like this. Um, just ways that you can benefit from having a massive army of creatures. These, these spells and, and uh, other creatures that give bonuses to those things get exponentially more powerful the more wide you go. Um, as far as buffing creature goes, there's also a couple mirror cards in each color that I wanted to just point out. I think they're kind of interesting. Um, in in uh, yellow, in willpower, you have Loyal House Carl, a 5 magic of prophecy for a 2-2, two, two, uh, summon, give a creature, plus 2, plus 2, and guard. This is, of course, the willpower version of another card in strength. Um... Morkul Gatekeeper, 3 Magicka, for a 2-2 two, two Prophecy Guard, give a creature plus 2 plus 0. So you can see, you know, that's Strength's more aggressive version of that card. Um, both sort of benefiting from having a board full of creatures already, allow you to make favorable trades with some of your smaller creatures, or play defense if that's the route you're going. There is also, of course, Orc Clan Captain and 5th Legion Trainer sort of mirrors of each other. Uh, one giving, you know, as long as it's on the board, the, you know, the more aggressive, uh, statted, aggressively statted Orc Clan Captain in strength, and 5th Legion Trainer, a more long-term investing type creature uh, in willpower. Um, finally, both colors have a couple of card draw mechanics um, that uh, fit into the Crusader archetype. Uh, those are East March Crusader, who is a Nord himself. Uh, when you summon him, if you've broken an enemy rune this game, you get to draw a card. Very valuable creature. Can replace itself with an, you know with another card. Keeps the gas going uh, as the game progresses. In uh, red, you have a couple cards like this that replace themselves. Um, just draw attached to creatures. You have one of the most powerful draw cards in the game. In... Um, Triumphant Jarl. Summon if you have more health than your opponent. Draw two cards. It fits nicely into almost anything you're going to be doing with Crusader. And uh, Vigilant Giant, who doesn't see a lot of play, but is an enormous creature. Uh, 8 Magicka, 8-8, eight, eight, Breakthrough, Guard, Summon, Draw a card. Very, very valuable. If you can get to the point where you're cashing in your, your 8 Magicka for Vigilant Giant, you know, you're doing pretty well. So those are just a few of the mechanics uh, that they share. There, there's a little bit of overlap in their removal. Um, you know, I know with when we were talking about Mage last week, there were quite a few things that those colors had in common, um, yellow and blue. Uh, yellow and red have a lot of the same mechanics. Um, they have a lot of the same mechanics, but not as wide array. Uh, a lot, a uh, wide of an array of mechanics that they share, so it's mostly these that we've mentioned. But I wanted to just point out a couple mirror type situations with the removal spells. You have Aerostorm for a cheap removal spell to remove small creatures in willpower, and in strength you have Fireball, which does the you know the red equivalent there of this ability, which is deal one damage to all enemies, and you also have it attached to a creature, which a lot of the red cards are in Scob and Pyromancer, which does the same thing to a lane. Finally, you have a mass removal for larger scale situations that to sort of mirror each other. You have Burn and Pillage for 5 Magicka, deal 1 damage to all enemy creatures in a lane for each destroyed enemy rune, which you know, fits nicely into what Crusader is doing, or what the, the Nord theme is in general. And then you have, um, again, one of the most powerful cards in the game, in Dawn's Wrath, 8 Magicka, for a willpower action that destroys all creatures in a lane. Um, yeah, I think it's interesting the way that uh, each color seems to have you know, their own take on certain mechanics that overlap in there. And that's that. Uh, so we're going to take a quick look now at the two multicolor cards uh, that uh, Crusader shares at the current moment. We have Rift Thane, who is one of the m most overstatted two-drop creatures in the game right now. Very powerful card. Two Magicka for a 2-2. Two, two. 
but when you summon it, if you have less health than your opponent, it gets plus zero, plus two, and gains guard. And if you have more health than your opponent, it gets plus two, plus zero, and gains breakthrough. So this is a very, very effective, efficiently uh, statted creature for the cost. Um, is useful whether you're ahead or behind, whether you're reactive or proactive, whether you're their aggressor, whether you're a slower deck or a faster deck, paying two Magicka for this is going to give you the effect most beneficial to you at the time, whether that's pushing damage or defending yourself from damage. Finally, we have Tyr, one of the biggest creatures you can get off of a Prophecy. Uh, unique Legendary card, Prophecy Breakthrough Guard 5-4 four for 4. Very simple card, but probably the a kind of card that's going to fit into any Crusader strategy. Because, you know, imagine you get this broken off your first rune. That's a huge tempo swing that your opponent's going to have to answer and may not be able to immediately. And if that is the case, they are in for a world of hurt. As far as weaknesses in these colors go... Um, there are a few. I mean, the biggest one is that there are no sticky minions. And when I say sticky minions, what I mean is there aren't creatures in this color combination that uh, leave anything behind when they die. There is no last gasp effects in Crusader. There are no wards in Crusader. It is very, you know, very straightforward most of the time to remove creatures in a Crusader deck. Um, you know, they sort of hedge against this by going wide a lot of the time, filling the board with cheap creatures. But for the most part, if you can kill it, it's dead, and it's easy to kill most of these creatures. The one exception is Mage Slayer. This is sort of a one-off uh, ability in this in this color combination. It can't be damaged by actions, but it can still be killed by a number of spells. It can be attacked into. It's very small. So the biggest weakness the color has is a weakness to removal in general. Um, to play around that sort of thing, you know, you do have access in red to. Um, Withered Hand Cultist, which makes all actions cost two more, but that's a very limited sort of defense against this sort of thing. Now, if you're very aggressive and very tempo-oriented, and you land that thing on turn two or turn three, you might still be able to avoid a lot of serious removal, but it's worth noting that that is, of course, where the removal in this is. Uh, it's also worth pointing out that there are a pair of uh, two Magicka 4-1s in this color combination. Uh, there's Ravenous Hungerer, which, you know, in willpower, which which has access to drain, you put it in a lane with an opposing creature, it gains drain. And in red, who is more aggressively oriented, you have a 4-1 for 2 with prophecy, who you presumably will be putting in a lane without any opposing creatures. Um, there have been a couple of uh, reasonably successful uh, archetypes in this color combination. Um, there has been, uh, historically, the... Uh, the token aggro crusader, which we've you know alluded to, that goes wide, plays very aggressively, might try to seal the late game against control decks with cards like Gladiator's Arena, and uh, running a lot of prophecies of its own. Tempo cards like Cast Out, maybe a closer in something like um, Belligerent Giant to clear out opposing blockers for a final push for damage, and uh, then you know your usual suspects, of course. Rift Thane, um, maybe Fiery Imp, definitely Relentless Raider, maybe even Sharpshooter Scout if you're going that aggressive, Mage Slayer, Orc Clan Captain, Greystone Ravager, Afflicted Lit, all that sort of thing. That's probably the one we've seen the most. In recent weeks, we have seen uh, the debut of CBH's Orc Crusader list. Which plays, uh, you know, the red orc package <laughs> alongside a lot of the, the cards that you traditionally see in the um, the Crusader token aggro list from yellow, and uh, you know, b plays a little bit more board controly and has access to one of the best two for one creatures you can run, uh, Stone Shard Orc. Getting value off Stone Shard Orc uh, sort of makes up for the fact that in a deck like this, you don't have a lot of room for big, expensive removal spells, and you're flooding the board with creatures, so you should be able to get some value like that. Um, as far as unexplored archetypes in this color combination, the one that kind of came—oops, <laughs> the one that kind of came to mind for me—that uh, I, I tried building maybe four months ago and sort of uh, stopped because I, you know, got distracted by something else that I wanted to build—is uh, a sort of mid-rangey life gain matters cards that exploits um, cards like, well, let me just show you what I would put in a list like this for an example. I think a, a deck like this is going to really value Dawnstar Healer's ability to stay ahead in life, um, both because you're going to be abusing uh, 
the two life gain life matters cards in these colors, that being Golden Saint and Triumphant Jarl, in a less than super blindingly aggressive deck. And you're going to do that by gaining life and uh, running value creatures. So you'd be running cards like this in this sort of deck. Um, you would definitely, of course, be running the multicolor cards. Tear is just fantastically good on curve and off prophecy. Rift Thane, you know, this is a deck where Rift Thane is its flexibility would be at a premium. You know, the ability to uh, lay down two four on turn two because your opponent dropped a uh, an aggressive had an aggressive start can really make a game uh, turn around pretty quickly. And then you're running, you know, sort of the usual suspects for control, but you're just running them in the most aggressive way possible. Cloud Rest Illusionist, probably a must include Hive Defender. Um, oh, I forgot, I, uh, I iced those in favor of the guy with the uh, Chardonnay glass and the uh, white jacket. You're probably running, you know, from red, not as many cards as you would be running from... Uh, from yellow, but you're probably looking at cards that uh, generate long-term advantage. Uh, smaller cards that are going to survive multiple combats. Uh, Fearless Northlander, I think, would be an easy fit in a deck like this. Um, I think you're almost certainly going to be running Earthbone Spinner. I think you're going to be running more cool Gatekeeper again for the Prophecy. And you're going to be wanting some two-drops, so you're going to want things that trade effectively. Um, things that uh, gain you some sort of, uh, you know, beneficial board position. I think you're going to look into uh, yellow for this. This is where Bruma Profiteer is going to shine, right? This is where Kavach Soldier might be playable, Priest of the Moons, Ravenous Hunger, probably very effective in this sort of list. Um, and you're curving out a little bit deeper, perhaps, than most um, Crusader decks tend to. But you're, you know, you have access to these life gain mechanics. You might run Hajini, or a Regini Highwayman or two, Aradon Paladin, perhaps. Just sort of a life gain um, oriented deck that uh, you know combats aggro that way, and sort of like my um, uh, cloud rest control deck in spell sword uh, has problems with decks that go really big, but can play with the right draw, a very aggressive game against these sorts of colors uh, against in those matchups and win that way. Um, the other unexplored archetype in this color combination that I uh, think is worth mentioning is I think that this color combination actually has a lot of tools that fit nicely with the Dweamer cards. Um, so, you know, any Dweamer deck would, of course, be running the Halls of the Dweamer and then all of the uh, usual Dweamer suspects. Um, Dwarven Centurion being your, your big boss Dweamer. Um... Maybe a couple of these, definitely these for an under undercosted minion. Sparking spiders, dwarven spheres for tempo, mechanical allies, ageless automatrons perhaps, uh, spider workers, dwarven spiders. And the reason I like this color combination for these is because you have access to a lot of the most premium equipment cards in red. You know, you probably want rapid shot to cycle for your better cards. Uh, Steel Scimitar on any of these smaller guys turns them into viably playable cards. Um, you, know, you may even throw a Plunder in there. Uh, you have access to... Oh, excuse me. More abilities to beef them up. And in yellow, of course, you also have access to this Legion Trainer for removal. Legion Shields. I'm just sort of tossing out all sorts of ideas here. And... Uh, a Dawnbreaker, Divine Fervor, Loyal House Carl, Piercing Javelins, and you know, this just off the top of my head, an idea for a list, because I think that with the printing of a few more Dweamer cards, it'll be time to seriously consider really cracking down and uh, engineering a good Dweamer deck, and I think Crusader might be the place for that in the future. Okay, so finally, my new card idea for this color combination. Um, I did a lot of thinking about this, and what I ended up deciding that I really liked was a support card. I know uh, we had something that dealt with support cards last time. But it's a support card. Three Magicka, support, Markarth Decree. Let's go with that, since I don't know a lot about the lore. When a creature you control breaks an enemy rune, destroy it, and an opponent's creature. Okay, this fits into the theme of... Uh, you know, breaking opponent runes, opponent's runes matter that the color combination is all about. It fits into yellow's um, unrestricted removal suite. And it gives a mid-range deck an ability to, you know, 
remove creatures um, not any time they want because they, it would have to trigger when you broke an opponent rune, opponent's rune, but you could exploit you know, a scouting patrol token and destroy in the other lane um, a huge guard creature or a drain creature or something like that. Um, keeping it these two colors kind of uh, keeps it from being too broken, although you could obviously combo it with things like Sharpshooter Scout. You know, if your opponent's a 26 and you play a Scout, you ping him for one, then all of a sudden you get an Ice's biggest creature. You know, but I think that's sort of reasonable. I think three is a pretty good cost for a card that doesn't immediately do anything and requires other support, uh, no pun intended, to get the job done. So yeah, that is my look at Crusader. Um, I think the color combination is interesting, sort of underplayed. I know the uh, aggro flavor of the month lately is Battle Mage, um, but I think that the Crusader token aggro deck is, is still pretty good. I think that there are some underplayed cards in this color combination. I think that on the strength of... Um, Rift Thane alone, this color combination should see more play, because this may be the best two-drop in the game, at least one of them. And I think that uh, it's the kind of color combination that it would only actually take maybe one or two more um, really interesting and uh, probably, hopefully, narrow, narrowly designed multicolor cards to really get something cool going. So, that is this episode. I want to say Happy New Year one more time to everybody. Um, next week we'll be talking about uh, another color combination. I'll decide sometime during the week. I hope you're all having a great beginning of the season, and I will see you all on the ladder. Bye-bye.